Okay, so I'm starting with this image, okay? And we're gonna channel select this out. And the reason for that is, you guys have probably seen this a lot, where you see wispy hair over a logo or something like that, okay? Where everything's selected out really cleanly. And this is one of the ways they do that, okay? And it's basically a different, I mean, it's basically what we did the last time, but we have to do a couple extra little steps on it. So, by the way, if you're going to shoot somebody for this kind of thing, if I was a photographer and I was shooting people for whatever reason, I would always shoot them on either a light colored or a white background. Even if that's not going to be my whole shoot, I would set up a white seamless and go, I want to get a couple of shots like this. So it's super easy for me to, to separate. Now, I can, I can do that. If they're on any kind of seamless, for the most part, I can still do it. But white really makes it easy. Okay? So, we're going to go here to our channels again, just like last time. Okay, I got my channels right here. Now, we're going to do the same routine. Where's the most amount of contrast? That's not it, clearly. It's really washed out. And what I'm really looking for, really for me, is I'm looking at this perimeter. That's because that's where I got to worry about it. The interior, I can go in and just paint it out. Does that make sense? I can just have a regular brush and paint it out. So it feels like yeah, I guess it feels like it's the blue again. So I'm going to drag this down onto the plus, make a copy. Same routine. Now it should be a lot easier here because this is now again. You got to make sure you're not eating into. You got a lot of wispy. This is a high res file. You got a lot of wispy hair in there. And I'm gonna again. I'm gonna do this for brevity, but you got to really be on top of it. So I'm gonna bring in the. I'm gonna go right to the darks. And what I like to do is zoom in on the hair, and make sure I'm not eating it up. That doesn't look too bad. What'll happen is it'll get ratty edges, which it's not doing too much now. It's not too bad. I'm going to go to the whites. I want to see if I can do this. I don't think it'll work, but. So I'm going to go to the white and try and pull that up a little bit. That's probably going to be about as good as I can get. Maybe even just there. And I'm going to try and do the <clears throat> same thing we did last time. I want to zero these out to black and white. Go to black. And I'm going to put my brush on overlay again. I'm going to get a hard round, or just a hard edge brush, but the round works good. This one. You can see it can't completely cover the white. It's too much. Because that's the that's the value of this thing is it doesn't really want to paint on white. So I'm going to take this off overlay for a second so it doesn't look so weirdly alien. It's a little better. It just is distracting. Back to overlay. Now I also don't want to just fill in every. If there's a hole here, like that, feels more like a hole there. So I don't want to paint over that. I want to paint over the reflections and all that sort of thing.
Now this is nice and white, the background. So again, it makes it a little easier because the black does not want to paint on there. I also don't want it to get too heavy handed. <clears throat> so I'm doing this again to be quick, but I don't make sure that you're being careful about it. Yeah. Because I, I need this to be, this is nothing but a mask. So I need to be 100%, where I need it to be masked out, it's got to be 100%. And then when it's, when it's shot on a background like this, you know, and there's other tools you can use in here. I'll probably show you guys a video later of uh, somebody using the same exact process, but he's using the dodge and burn tools more because it's a more complex selection. Hmm. Mm hmm. Like in this area, I could just go. But when I get in these smaller areas, I want to be a little more finessed. I don't want to fill everything in, but I need kind of 100% black in there. And I'm going to go, now I'm going to switch. I can hit X and switch my palette or my uh, swatches. I'm going to go out here. Hopefully, I haven't ate into it. Doesn't feel like I have too much. Let's see. You know, I did a little bit. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I got to get a little less ham fisted here. You can see how it can eat up the edges, so I got to be really careful with that. Let's hope I'm good here. going to reopen a few of these. To me, these are more, I mean, some of these are openings. They're not. To be painted out. Okay, so now I'm going to flip back over, not overlay, and flip back to black. Sometimes my hotkeys don't work on this machine. I don't know why. That's okay. We'll find out. Okay, so I'm going to make a selection. Nope, there's still stuff not selected. See how it's showing this interior stuff? I don't want that. So, which is kind of weird. I don't know why it's doing that. So, did you just control the editor? Um, yeah, I went, no, I, I clicked the, the thumbnail. I right, uh, control click the thumbnail. Let's see if it's getting recent, because I'm not sure exactly what it's picking up there. That's better. I think that's good. So I'm going to invert it, because it always seems like I need to invert it. So let's go select, invert, oops, inverse. And let's go back to our layers. And I'm going to go layer mask, and there it is. Okay, so let's put our gray behind that. Not too bad. Now, what you see here, though, is we've got this fringing. You see that? Right? So now we want to go... How did I end up with blue? Uh, 
I picked up that little shine there, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to go... I want to put this on darken now. I'm going to go back to my... I'm going to actually go to my uh, clone tool. And I actually should be able to do this on another layer, so let's try that. And I'm going to make this layer, I'm going to go Alt. See how it's giving me my little clipping mask thing? I'm going to clipping mask it. So now it's going to, it should follow this mask, hopefully. And this brush, oh, this is at 49. I probably don't want it there. I probably want it a little higher. And then I'm going to put this on, sometimes I put it on darken. And sometimes I take it off. So where's darken? There it is. I'm going to make this bigger. This says all layers. I'm just going to put just current and below. I don't need to go all the way to the gray. Come on. Again, my hotkey isn't working. This one I could probably go with a softer round. Let's try that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just sample the color right by this. Oops, that was a sloppy one. I'm going to sample this right by it. So, option, sample. And you can see it just starts to add in where that sloppy mask is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's better to try and grab it, you know, someplace that's sort of similar. Now, sometimes I will take it off of dark and let's go to normal if I don't want it to get too dark. But it's because it's a hair mass, as long as it's not screaming that it's a different color, you're probably pretty good. Like I might pick up some of that there. Oops. And as I go down, I could probably go a little more back to my dark and if I want and it will pick up all this wispy stuff Oops, I don't want that. and I'm keeping this on the layer above because I'm using a clipping mask I can do it on the layer that I did it from <clears throat> but if I do it this way if I want if I don't like my selection or my solution here I can change it Get all the way down here. Oops. I went over a little bit. And normally, again, I'd be going a lot slower at this. Let's see. Let me get this here. Now, a common thing with this, and I have to go in here and finesse it, but you can see where I'm going, correct? You're starting to get a really nice, clean selection. Now, I'm going to go, a lot of times people will go right to the flesh tone here. You could start there if you want. I'm going to change this. Could do something like that. I could go, I mean, there's a million things I can do, but let's go. Let's. See. And then I like to roll through the spectrum and go, is there a cooler color? I actually like the blue better. And then maybe desaturated a hair. I could put the masthead behind it.
fill this back in. Grab my eyedropper, sample that, fill it. And then I could go, I could leave it even this color and go through here and go, is there, you know, I would want it screaming orange probably. That's got a little bit of the blue in it, just a hair. So let's go to that one. Let's go to this one and maybe I could pull this down just a hair and really let some of the blue come through. Pop it in like that. And you would come down here. And start to put start to put whatever layout right does that make sense yes I don't like the composition so I'm going to move this over move this over that's better move this over and then recrop it probably right about there Does that make sense so that's how they do that again this is not about selecting hair okay hang on another thing I might do like here it feels like it's got a little bit of coolness to it, but I might go make another layer, pick this color, oh, it's already picked, and then maybe come up here and just go, I mean, I can either try it this way or I can just brush it on, but let's try it this way. I just clicked the, the mask right here to create the selection. Uh, control clicked it. So this is another example of what I've been saying, this control clicking thumbnails. We're doing it in paths, we're doing it in channels, we're doing it in layers, and now we're doing it using that mask. So if there's something on a layer that you want to use as a selection, usually you can control click the thumbnail and it will use that as a selection. Could be the object, could be anything. Okay. Because what I want to do here is maybe come in here and get a, I'm going to get a really low opacity brush here, a real soft, super low opacity brush. And now I'm going to do another overlay. I have to see which one, I don't know. And it's probably going to be hard to see up on that monitor, but... I'm going to go to which one? Maybe there. That cooled it out just a hair. That cooled it off just a hair. I'm going to pull it off a little. So what I wanted to do was cool off that reflection to, to imply that it's reflecting what the light is in the virtual room behind her. Does that make sense? It's important that you think about that. Okay. Now sometimes <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of places I could probably play around with that idea. Maybe I probably wouldn't do it because she's got warm light on her. So the warm lighting is going to change the equation a little bit. But that reflected light can say a lot about me putting her in this environment. Does that make sense? And I know it's really subtle, but and people aren't going to sit there and go, "Wow!" Unless they're designers, they're not going to sit there and go, "Wow! Look at that cool little cool reflected light. That's really cool." Nobody cares. See, I still have to go in here. This is too rough edge. It's too hard edge in here, so I'd have to go in and clean that all up. So when you're going in and making your initial selection, that's really the whole key. When you're when you're reducing this from black, you know, to just black and white, 
you got to be really careful that you don't have ratty edges and that you're overdoing it and eating up the edges and doing all that weirdness okay and you can see the layer mask right here that it created from my my mat I made right right here so that's your your layer mask selection okay questions on that Hmm? And I saw everybody's...